here we go. Morning all. As per usual, Jason's got me um, wandering around the farm with him. So I'm just following him um, just up the track. He's gonna do a bit of groundwork uh, first with this lovely, um, well, you can't see him yet. You just see his bum at the moment. Um, really nice three-year-old colt. So he's entire. Um, and this is his second week. No, Jace, is this his third week? Sorry, it's, it's just into his third week, but um, Jason's had to take his time with him because um, he's uh, he was hand reared. He's quite an interesting, interesting horse. He was hand reared. Um, he's very, very well bred. He's by Don Nobles out of a worldly mare. Worldly was by um, Weltmeyer. So if you're into your dressage breeding, you can... Uh, yeah, he's anyway, he's very posh, um, but he was hand reared and that has just made it, it sometimes makes things a little bit harder on the ground because they're so familiarized with humans and they sort of see humans in a slightly different light. Um, so Jason, in the first week of starting horses, he tends to be riding them by sort of day four or five. But with this chap, he really had to take his time and um, I think the first ride was sort of Monday and Tuesday of, of last week. So I would say this would be his, I don't know, fifth or sixth ride that you're going to see. But he has a slight tendency of being a little cold backed, which I'm sure will sort of ease as um, he gets used to being ridden. So Jason just likes to do a bit of groundwork first and today we're actually exploring through the woods and sometimes it's quite nice to go for a little ground hack with them but this is going to be the first time that he's seen the water so I've got no idea how this is going to go hopefully it won't be um, too tricky morning from Newcastle Judy lovely and um, so Jason actually went round the tracks and things down in the woods yesterday um, ridden. Um, his owner came to see him. You can see he's a little tight back there. Um, and um, yeah, he went really well, went over some logs and did all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, how's it going, Jace? All good. I, I'm guessing you've given everyone the lowdown. Well, sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so Rico here, I'm sure as Penny's mentioned, he's... Um, I've just been a little bit careful with him being hand reared. They have a tendency if you, if you push too, if you don't get it just pretty right with them, they can either shut down on you and just ignore you or they can become resentful and sometimes be a bit aggressive. He's, he's been neither of those two so far. And a little bit of, of that is because I've taken a bit of time and if I feel like well I'll be a bit careful here just let him sort of take it in his stride I'm sort of letting him come to the work which you know I do with with all horses but with horses like him you know you just got to be a bit on it um, so he is a bit cold back so anything I put on him he's he's been quite reactive to um, and he's starting to settle to it but I'm just, I do a little bit with him before I get on and I thought today I'll put him through the water and hopefully when I come to get on him, uh, having done this bit of groundwork, he'll be pretty flat and good to go for a ride without sort of getting yeah. um, humpy. And also it's another, it's another forward cue. I like to teach horses to go from A to Z before we start making them look pretty doing it. And Jace, does it, when you start stallions or, you know, colts, um, do you have to treat them differently? Is he, he's not that culty, is no. he? This guy, he's more interested in humans than he is other horses. <laughs> but no, he's, um, he's been fine. Some, some colts can't handle a dangly bits, but, um, <laughs> you know, the, those horses, they, they're just hard work when they're really culty and looking out for mares all the time. But I just, 
keep on my job and hopefully they start to follow me, you know, with the work. But they, they are hard work sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, so um, you can see. I mean, he's a he's a really you know a stunner. He's not a he's not a huge horse um, by any means. I mean, obviously he's got a lot of filling out to do because he's only three. Um, but he's um, you know he's a he's a bit of a beauty. So Jason just uses um, a sort of long, um, well, it's sort of lunge whip. Um, type thing but he uses it as a baton so it's almost like a a a wall so he's not going to use it to hit him or anything like that but it's um it's used as a, a sort of conductor's baton and a bit of a, a a sort of wall that they don't go into um so over the weekend we had our hacking camp so anyone who is on the hacking camp will, um, this will be very familiar because they go and hack around the um, farm and things and um, they all go through the water. Um, so that's, um, that's, that's part of it. And they had a great time. So in the hacking camp, they go off round um, the local lanes. They learn how to ride in groups, learn how to ride away from each other and things like that. And, um, yeah, and then, then they obviously go around the farm. And we also had them all cantering up the field in a group, um, sort of 10-acre field. So that was quite a, a bonus for, um, for lots of them. So Jason, when he came down here, he was like, Oh, like everything's been going through the water pretty well, actually, pretty easily. It won't take a sec. <laughs> no, sometimes it takes a while. Okay, so he's just looking for a try and there it is. So he's been sort of looking around. He hasn't really looked at the water yet. He's been like, oh, what do you want me to do? And that when he put his head down and investigated, that's what Jason's looking for. There's another one. He's just checking it out. And this is what they do. You see, he's having a little nose. He's having a little nuzzle. And he might start pouring at it and sort of testing it. That's the sort of you next stage. <laughs> I've heard Jason say this so many times. So they will. They'll, they'll do all their avoidance techniques and they'll go from side to side and they might back up and they might sort of be a bit silly. Then they'll have a little try. They'll investigate. And now he's sort of working out, OK, what do you want me to do? And hopefully in a minute he'll sort of look across you know, he'll look over and he'll he'll take a a brave step. So Neil has just said Jason referred to my stallion as a culty bugger when he was in to be started about four years ago. <laughs> I hope he's not anymore, or maybe he is if he's been serving mares. Um, I don't know. I might just go round the other side. You might get a slightly better view of it. So for those of you who aren't um, that familiar with um, us, J Jason's got an Australian stock saddle on. Um, that's what he starts the horses in. Um, so he keeps nice and um, safe. Um, so in another week or so, he'll go into his own saddle. And you can see he's sort of now just settling down. He's thinking, OK, what do you want me to do? Um, so horses, when they're trying to avoid things, they'll go from side to side. So that's part of, um, and you can imagine, this doesn't have to be water. This could be a ramp to a trailer. This could be loading, anything like that. It's all the same techniques. You need to keep them straight and they need to understand the forward cue.
So sometimes Jason on sort of more experienced horses, um, he probably wouldn't do this on the ground first. He would, um, you know, he might put them straight through um, being ridden, but yeah, <laughs> he's just saying, it's his old age, he likes to put them through um, on the ground first so he doesn't get into a, get into a battle or anything with them. So Rico's having a good old play with this now. So he sort of n knows that it's not, um, you know, that it's not going to eat him. This bit of time taken at the start is, needs a bit of rush yeah. to jump through. So Jason just said, um, taking your time at the start and not getting into a battle and anything like that just means that when they do go through, it's not like a sort of, a scared leap they tend to just you know tiptoe in and then walk through hopefully we'll get to see that before you all get bored and um <laughs> and i know it's, it's yeah it's like jason said it's always a bit of a risk when you decide to do something like this because you know some horses will go through in a couple of minutes um some some will be there for quite a while um it's like back in the day when we used to do our coffee mornings on the yard Jason said, right, I'm going to do a loader today. And I'd always be, oh, no. Because sometimes, you know, they do, they do really take their time. You can see there, he's just starting to, like, pour at the water a little bit. He looks like he's getting a bit bored and sort of thinking, okay, then. So although these, these kind of things might be um, not that interesting to watch, it's, um, it's so important when they're doing things for the first time and they don't know, to just really take your time with it. Yeah. So Jason's just saying, sorry, he hasn't got a microphone on. It's, um, it's recognizing the stages, sort of recognizing when they are trying and when actually, okay, come on, you need to, you know, you need to crack on now. Um, so soon he's really sort of getting, getting the used to it. So it might be time to put a little bit more pressure on and say, okay, mate, right, you've had your, you know, you've had your investigation and that's uh, one of the stages of putting a horse over obstacles or loading. You've had your investigation. Now, come on, next stage, let's go. <laughs> Jason's very, very patient. You see, if this was me, I'd be like, oh, come on, just get on with it, go through. But um, I suppose that's why Jason's a horse trainer and I'm not. <laughs> Bless him. So we do, um, Jason does get um, horses here, you know, experienced competition horses that maybe don't like water or don't like ditches and things. And it's a question of going right back, um, you know, to the start with them and sort of doing this all over again. Um, there's nothing more frustrating if you've got a fantastic eventer and you're flying around a course and then you get to a water and you never know whether they're going to go in or not. So he looks like he's having a good old drink, actually. <laughs> he's pl playing with it. So we do, um, we also do have horses that are hand reared and they can be really different. Um, in the early stages of their starting program, um, sort of on the on the ground, especially, they they tend to be very sort of bold and um, maybe a little bit in in your in your face, um, just because they're so much more humanised than than other youngsters that have been you know out in a herd or you know out in you know, with their mum and then with a couple of other youngsters out in the field and not, not handled very much. Um, so with this chap, 
you know, he would give the odd little nuzzle, odd little nip here and there, but, um, you know, he's actually been, been great um, since he's settled in after the last couple of days. So now Jason just said he, yeah, he just said that's the first time he's seen him look across. And you can see he's sort of checking out, okay, well, how do I get to the other side? There, you see, he's looking across and he's thinking, okay. And he hasn't at any stage been worried or stressed about this whole process or anything like that. He just doesn't want to get his back feet wet. <laughs> There we go. Oh. <laughs> and so you see he he's his tendency is quite naturally is um to come towards Jason obviously because Jason's on the dry land. But Jason's sort of just keeping that that baton, that barrier, that whip barrier out to just prevent him from really barging into him and barging into his space. Yeah, so you can see as Jason's sort of using the baton, it, it actually takes, anyone who's done this here, it takes quite a lot of coordination um, to move it at the right time and, and at the right angle and things like that. So I'll try and get a bit of, um, bit of that so to show you. So it's the tap, the little forward cue. You can see Jason's hand that he's got the rope in. That's in, that's in a forward cue. So he's asking the horse to go forwards. Now he's just checking out whether he can come round this side or not. So now Jason can afford to put a little bit more energy in because he has actually, you know, he's been through it. He knows it's okay. And now he, he needs to realize that, you know, crack on. <laughs> he's decided he doesn't want to get his feet wet again. So as I said earlier, his owner came down to see him yesterday and um, Jason rode him out around the farm, out around the tracks and he was popping over little logs on the ground. And, it, you know, if you didn't get the, the start of this, he's, um, he's only, this will probably be when Jason actually gets on him. It'll be his fifth, sixth ride. Yeah, and he had to take his time on the ground with him in this first week. So hopefully by the end of this session, he'll be um, going fluently through the water on the ground and under saddle. How's it going? Slowly but surely. Yeah, so he's it, he's quite interesting. He's sort of stopped making the same effort as he was before. And now he's checking it out a little bit more. So Jason might have to put a little bit more energy in. And again, when we say energy, it's not like beating your horse through a through a um, through the water or anything like that. It's just a steady tap, tap, tap. And as soon as he gives a little forward try or he puts his head down to investigate and things, then Jason will stop. For some of you, I'm sure you would have been able to, whilst all this is going on, um, stick the kettle on. You probably finished your cup of tea by now. This will make quite a nice video anyway, so I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay videoing for a bit longer than usual. So that was a little shuffle forward. Uh, 
Oh, so Neil said uh, he's he's called I don't know I don't know his name, but he won the novice freestyle at the area festival champs this weekend. So definitely less culty. He does have the odd moment, but generally as good as gold. Oh, that's brilliant, Neil. What was his name again? Oh, that's great. Caroline West, just love watching, could watch for hours. Well, it might be hours at this rate. <laughs> so the main thing Jason d doesn't want him to do is start stepping backwards because then it would be like that's a real sort of evasion. But all this time that he's just you know, chilling out, trying, trying to work out what's want, wanted, then, um, you know, everything stays pretty chilled out. And it's a rhythmical tap, tap, tap. And you can see Jason just put the, um, the, the schooling whip on his neck then. It's just, um, it's always sort of desensitizing to it because you don't want them to be scared of this. It's like being scared of, a, of the rider's legs. You want them to accept it, but you know, respond well, um, respond in the right way to it. There he goes, there he goes. He's looking over, he's thinking, okay. Now, I'm not sure as a as a future dressage horse how many um, water jumps he will be negotiating in the future, but it's um, it's a great life lesson. You know, we we want our horses to go away from here after they've been started. Being able to hack out, you know, do do anything, go anywhere you want them to go, regardless of whether you know they're going on for dressage we've actually got three little race horses in at the moment for for starting and the fact that they they'll do all of this as well it means that you know if they don't make it on the racetrack then um you know they could go on to be you know really useful um riding horses in the future so he's not completely happy about going through it always thinking oh can i get over there what we really don't want is Jason to have to like wade through there. <laughs> Good boy. I mean, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, but before I can ride him through, he's got to go through straight. The moment he's leaning on me, so he's coming through the water, but he's leaning on the side of me. So you know, once he gets his confidence, and he actually goes forward, which he hasn't quite done yet. Then I can jump on and hopefully ride him through fairly easily. But he still hasn't quite found his forward through it, and I may have to let him go to the other side and explore that option because he's sort of looking at going that way, and he thinks, no, I'm just going to try and creep down the edge down here. And that's where I have to be careful not to just let him push through me. So, um, you know, feel free to, to, to disappear off. You don't have to stay and watch. Um, but I'm actually just going to keep filming because um, we'll probably just, you know, pop this on, um, you know, a, a, a YouTube or something like that because it's quite interesting. And I, I'm finding this quite interesting actually because he's not, he's not actually scared. He's not particularly worried um, about the water. Um, some horses, you will find that they're really, you know, they're really fretty about it, very anxious. And sometimes those are the horses which um, might have had a bit of a bad experience going through water or they've been sort of pressured into going through it. Um, so maybe older horses. And they can get really worried about it, but he doesn't seem particularly, um, particularly worried or anything. It's just a question of him learning um, what Jason wants him to do.
Jace, do you always lead from that side? Yeah, he says, I, th I think, like most things, that some, some things come, come more easily to you one side, but he will do the other side in a, in, a, in a minute. So this is just a slightly different tact. It looks like he's sort of almost, um, almost doing a little circular lunge around him. Um, you know, to remind him of that forward cue. Yeah, so Joanna, yeah, um, this will just be saved in our Facebook page. So, yeah. Yeah, so he's using the whip to just, just create a block so he's, um, you know, all the time he's wanting to get over to where Jason's standing to avoid going through. Um, so the, the lunge whip becomes like a sort of a bit of a wall. There you go. Good boy. So if you weren't there at the beginning... Rico's a three-year-old um, colt. He's by Don Nobles, um, out of a, a mare by, by Worldly, who himself is by Weltmeyer. So he's a, he's a very well-bred horse, and I know his owners have, um, you know, great hopes for him. And obviously it was quite a traumatic upbringing. Um, if he was hand-reared, I presume, um, you know, the, the mare... Um, you know, there was something wrong with the, with the mare. Um, so obviously a lot of time and love has been invested in, in this horse. Um, you know, and sometimes, sometimes we get horses that come in and they've, I don't know, they've been bought for X, Y and Z and they're, you know, very expensive horses and it is quite a responsibility, but it's, well, it's a responsibility for every horse, whether it's, um, you know, we've got a lovely little 12-2 rescue pony in at the moment. So they're, they're all the same. And Jason's quite good at, um, you know, saying, well, a horse is a horse. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't know whether they were, uh, you know, how expensive they are. So, um, yeah. Jason just said, you can see there's a little bit of tightness in his, in his back there. And that's why he actually decided in the first place to do some groundwork first, because he is just a little bit um, cold back when you first get on him. Um, obviously, he's only been ridden five or six times, five or six rides. Ooh. Try not to get run over. Okay, so he's going to go through once more on the ground, then he's going to hop on. And hopefully it won't all go horribly wrong from there. <laughs> I always get slightly nervous when we do these 11 o'clock lives. Talking of the, the other horses we've got in, I should have shown you the, the lovely little pony. I don't know if you watch these a, a lot. You remember Dougal and Tonto, the little rescue ponies we've sort of had in in the past. So we've got Violet in. She's about 12 too. She's really little, but she's gorgeous. And um, so hopefully she'll go on to be a really nice, um, useful riding pony. Okay, so that was a lot more forward. He was going sort of straight through the middle there. And that was the other thing, actually, I've just noticed when he sort of rushed through, there's, there's only a little um, gap here um, to go through. And that was the other thing. He did come with a slight um, habit of rushing through gates or stable doors so you just saw then that he he did sort of rush through and almost go to go over Jason in that situation and um, yeah that's another thing that will be worked on as uh, 
as things go along. Cool. Right, so I think it's just gonna hop on now. Have you checked your girth, Jace? That's always the classic. Yeah, so touch wood, um, Jason doesn't, doesn't fall off too much. Um, I hope that's not like the uh, commentator's curse. Um, but when he has, it's been because he hasn't done up his girth properly. <laughs> I don't know what it's like where you are weather-wise, but it is definitely autumn now. It is really, really chilly today. Um, I'm actually shivering a little bit <laughs> filming this. Yeah, it's very cold. So it's only just been quite recently that Jason would sort of you know, obviously he'd start him off in the round pen and things like that. And he'll start using a mounting block as we um, go along. Oh no, I didn't quite get it there. Oh, he's gone straight through. What a good boy. So all that patience to begin with on the ground has sort of paid off. Yeah, Jason just said he doesn't feel too tight yet, but you know, if he starts putting his leg on, he might just bunch up a little bit and, and get a little bit tight. But you know, five or six rides in, he's going through the water and things. That's not too shabby. So the starting program here for these, these baby horses is um, they do four weeks. Um, so they'll have about, I don't know, 15 rides or so in those four weeks. Then they have a little break in the field for a couple of weeks to sort of freshen up and let them, you know, just, just uh, what's the word, get, get used to what's just happened and think about things. And then they come in for a further two weeks and we do handovers with the owners and then they go home. Well, I'm off for a little ride. I was going to show you a bit more of a ride, but I'm sure everyone's seen enough. Anyway, it just goes to show a bit of timing, a bit of feel, patience, and the job can get done with relative ease. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll follow you down the track for a little way. You want? Okay, so uh, yeah, we'll just, just follow him a little bit down here, um, down the all-weather tracks. So we're really lucky. We actually built these tracks during lockdown. Oh, I'm definitely not running after him. <laughs> oh, crikey, where's he going? He's off through the... This is where his Australian roots come in handy. It's like he's going through the, the Australian bush. These aren't exactly gum trees, but actually they look quite similar. So he did come down here yesterday. So he's probably ridden in the round pen for a couple of days. Ridden in the round pen for a couple of days. Then uh, we've got a track around the arena and then he came down here yesterday. Now this is an interesting one. He had a little rush through there, there's bits of carpet. Oh, he's gonna come round again and do that in a sec. So yeah, we just, um, down here we've got some ditches. We've got things like this with, um, made from bit strips of old carpet that we put them under and things like that. So this is a, like a real um, 
horse training, um, little haven really. Put up lots of things to um, get them used to any eventuality when they get home. So actually Jason will have only ridden him sort of in the arena once really. These first two or three weeks are all about getting them to go forward, out and about, round, round the farm. He'll take him up the lanes for a bit of hacking and then they'll go back into the arena and start doing the circles and the more schooling and things like that. Oh, he's going to come past here. can see he's still very wobbly and he's thinking can I go under there? Good boy. And so there won't be any sort of putting them on the bit and all that kind of stuff until much later on um, in their training with us. You see when he does rush, Jason's not pulling him to stop him rushing. Just let him bowl along. Okay, right, I think he is well and truly off into the distance now. Um, so um, we'll leave it there. Well, thanks for staying with us for so long. That's, that's brilliant. And um, maybe we'll catch up with um, young Rico, um, you know, towards the end of his training. You can see how far he'll have come. I don't know if you can just see him. He's, um, he's now going for a nice little wander up around the fields. Oh, Jason's waving. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch up with him towards the end of his training. And um, yeah, you can see him before he goes home. Perfect. Have a great day um, wherever you are. And um, yeah, happy, happy horses. <laughs> see you later. Bye.